Welcome to another episode of Sports Vibe, a free agency special. Tons of moves um, made in the last day or two. Um, you know, I guess not, um, we could start with some of the biggest moves. Obviously, you know, as a Giants fan, um, today I'm wearing a jersey of a, a real giant for life, Eli Manning, and not Saquon Barkley, who um, betrayed the Giants and went to the Eagles. So, I mean, that, that one really oh, hurt. Oh, please, oh, oh, please betray the Giants. Shut up. Shut up. John Mara never even offered Saquon a contract. And also, the yeah, well, they, 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 they did Saquon. last year, the same one. Yeah, and Wait, what but that was last year. That was last year. This is this year. And, of course, this whole Tiki Barber nonsense with him saying you're dead to me. Um, I know that, Tiki Barber, aren't you also dumb, known yeah. for... Mm-hmm. No, no, Tiki Barber, aren't you basically known for basically being the Antonio Brown of running backs in terms of like, you know, constantly, like, you know, uh, you know, causing chaos, dividing in the locker room. I mean, not Antonio Brown and his greatness, because Antonio Brown is far greater than what Tiki Barber's ever done. But in terms of stirring up chaos and being a locker room cancer and all that, so, like, what does Tiki Barber got to say on that? I don't know. But, I yeah. mean, I was just like the worst running go- back. No, I thought Saquon was going to go to Dallas. Yeah. Philadelphia was a bit surprising me to me. But, I, I thought that was much more likely with, with Pollard leaving. But, um, the Eagles but, kind of came out of nowhere because you know, Swift with, became a free agent. Yeah, with Bears, um, yeah, with DeAndre Swift, Swift signing with the Bears. Right. Yeah, makes things interesting. Yeah. Um, anyway. Yeah. All right, well, here's my non-emotional take on the whole Saquon Barkley situation. Like, Obviously, yeah, he you know he wanted to get paid. The Giants did not offer him the contract this year. Um, I mean, that's that's good and well. And he honestly made the best financial decision for himself. The Giants were, were not willing to you know pay him the, even the second franchise tag, and the Eagles were, were. So I mean, it's really it's really that simple. I mean, they paid the most money. I mean, you know, you can't really. I mean, the team it, it sucks obviously, but like you know, from his perspective. You know, I think he he made the right decision. As for the Giants, I, I completely understand why they would go for a guy like Singletary, you know, a guy who had almost as much production for a lot less value. And, you know, the Giants really, the Giants didn't really, you know, have the team to put around Saquon where it, it was really justified to spend a lot on, on a running back because there's so many other issues with the quarterback situation, the O-line, the receivers. They're in no position and yet, to and yet, really And yet compete. the Giants so also... And yet the Giants also put thirty million dollars on Brian Burns. Yeah. So but, I mean, the def- now the thing is like that is the D line's loaded now with Burns and yeah, but you your know, off- um, yeah, K-Bond yeah, but your offense is still your offense is still a sponge. Offense is so bad. Yeah, well, they need to clean that up. I mean, you know, getting Devin Seary. I mean, that's pretty decent. It's not going to be anything great, but um, in terms of, I mean. You know, they got Drew Locke. I saw that too. But I mean, hopefully they go for a quarterback uh, yeah, in the draft. Yeah, I mean, they Drew, still have to pass Drew Locke is making because Drew Locke is making opposing defenses really crap their pants. Right. Yeah. I I think he's just gonna be like stopgap option. I feel like that could be good for this year and um you know, just in case the whole Daniel Jones thing he doesn't start right away. That could be good in case they get a rookie and they want someone to start. I feel like that's why they the would Italian, get a though? guy like Drew Locke for a one year deal. Huh? What about the Italian? Oh, uh, he's like a third stringer. I mean, he's he has a great story, but I mean, come on, like that third stringer is better gonna... than your first stringer. Yeah, that's the problem. I mean, he, him and Tyrod Ty- so Ty- Taylor both look better than. Speaking of Taylor going to the Jets, but I mean, both of them look better than DJ. That's exactly why we need a new quarterback in the first place. I bet Drew Locke would be better than Daniel Jones too. But I mean, we'll we'll, see, we'll get to see that for itself. Also, the offensive line addressing that with you know John Runny, and I thought that was a nice deal. Um, offensive guard, I mean, desperately, and Jai definitely needed some help there. So I mean, they're they're doing their job in free agency. They got some splashes. I mean, they lost some great players, but at the same time, you know, running back and safety, there's there's more value. Um, I mean, you can you can get value elsewhere. So at the end of the day, for the Giants to repay Saquon, like I completely understand why they wouldn't want to do it. Now, for the Eagles' perspective, they have a good offensive line. They have a good quarterback. They have good receivers. If they want to go over the top and try to get Saquon, they're in a much better position to pay that kind of money. Um, you know what I mean? So, like, that's why, like, Giants didn't really make much sense. But for the Eagles, it made sense to spend a little bit more. It's a little 
We'll definitely know if we're paying, but at the same time, I, I feel like it could work out because of how talented Barkley is. I mean, he's never had the situation with a good line, you know, like um, to really succeed. And, you know, he could do that with the Eagles and, and make more money, which is what he wanted. So, I mean, I'm not going to say I'm happy for him because I'm not. But at the same time, I feel like it's a much better move for his career, his, you know, both on, on the field and, you know, in his pocket. So, I mean, you know. Like, aside, like, I, I do understand the deal and, you know, why both sides made that deal and why the Giants were likely not going to be able to make that deal. So, I mean, that's, 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 I guess, you know, taking all the motions out of the situation, that's how I feel about things. Well, oh, good. Now that you get that over with, let's discuss the signings that actually matter. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Tons of other signings. We got Kirk Cousins going to the Atlanta Falcons. Um, that that was a nice deal. Forty-five million dollars a year. Forty-five million dollars a year. Mm -hmm. hey, Kirk yeah, Cousins has made years. a lot I mean, of money in his hey. life. Oh yeah, uh, um, no, he definitely has. Um, you know, it's it's an interesting situation, I guess. You know, obviously the Falcons need a quarterback. You know, the Dustin Ritter wasn't cutting in. I mean, Cousins had some good years with the Minnesota Vikings, so I'm not exactly sure what their quarterback situation I mean, looks like now. But um, now, I mean, now Kyle Pitts actually has someone who's going to throw him the damn football. So Kyle Pitts, Drake London, then you got good old B. John Robinson. The Falcons could possibly make a play for the NFC South. They could possibly. They have a very, yeah, they have a very solid offense with Robinson and Pitts and, you know, uh, London, exactly. And and Kirk Cousins, um, you know, I would still say he's at least an above average quarterback. So I, I you know, I think that could be, that could be pretty successful. Um, And they also signed um, Darnell Mooney, um, you know, who kind of struggled with the Bears. I remember one of my friends, you know, had him in fantasy and he was like always upset be, that, that he was, you know, seemed to be. It's the Bears. Football, but the Bears haven't had that a good was, quarterback. Yeah. The in the hundred yes, plus years the Bears have existed, they've never really had like an amazing quarterback. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, speaking of the Bears and, and quarterback situations, um, any news on you know Justin Fields or is he you know what's the plan with with them and you know and Caleb and, and all of that stuff going on? Because it seems like he's they're running out of places to possibly trade Fields. Oh, well, that's Chicago's problem. Uh, I yeah, think I, mean, I think we all know I think we all know what they're probably gonna do. You think they're gonna draft Caleb Williams or just Fields? Probably. Uh, I think they're gonna draft Caleb. I I could see that happening. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I, I think so. But, and speak. Um. Yeah. I mean, the Patriots have a spot open at, at quarterback now after they traded Mac Jones. Yeah, we um, traded Mac Jones. We traded yeah. Mac Jones to the Jaguars. Now he's going to be backing up the first overall pick of the 2021 NFL Draft, Trevor Lawrence. And Mac Jones, I, he's either from Jacksonville or he, yeah, I think he's from Jacksonville. I think he, he was. Yeah. So I think it'll be a bit interesting what we do. I think, uh, in all likelihood, uh, since the Kirk Cousins dreams are dead. Uh, in all likelihood, we're at, we're probably going to end up drafting Jaden Daniels, um, and then hopefully maybe we can poach Calvin Ridley. That'd be nice. Uh, but um, I most likely might end up staying with the Jaguars. Uh, but you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, yeah. Definitely. Definitely agree with that for the Patriots. Um, probably one of the few landing spots. Still available. I feel like the Giants are probably not going to go in that direction after, you know, Drew Locke and whatever, you know, their plans. No, are of the course draft. not. But, because um, that, because then there'd be too uh, many mouths to feed. Yeah. And yeah, you can't there'd have. Be too many mouths they still have to feed. Um, yeah, we're we're good with the four. Is it four or three? I don't even. Uh, let's Jones, see. Locke, no. Let's see. Broken. Um, let's see. Yeah, broken and, Daniel and Jones. Let's see. Broken Daniel Jones, the Italian Stallion, Tyrod Taylor, and. Uh, and well, now, uh, on the Jets Drew... now right? oh oh so, so then, yeah, uh, let's so see broken down Daniel slot. Jones Italian Stallion and now Tom and um uh, what's his name Drew Lock so Drew I think Lock, that itself yeah. is fine and I mean that that quarterback it's, it's a pretty decent exactly no it doesn't 
Yeah, it's it's really not. But I mean, it leaves open or one more spot potentially for first, another first quarterback of all, in the draft. Daniel Jones. Is, yeah, we all know we'll Daniel see. Jones is perhaps a bottom ten quarterback in the league. So, not exactly much yeah. to scream about. But let's get back to yeah. some of the other moves. Um, right. Uh, Chris, uh, Christian Wilkins, uh, thank you for signing away from the AFC East and uh, joining the Raiders. Uh, Dolphin, Dolphins and Bills, they had quite the fires. Well, Bills had more of the uh, Bills had more of the release game. Dolphins, everyone else was just signing away. The pro, uh, yeah. got tortured. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see, they released uh, Mitch Moore, uh, Tredavious White, released Jordan Poyer. I mean, they released like they, half the Poyer and, uh, and White are two of the most players with their defense and now that yeah. they're gone Matt Mo- yeah and even then the secondary wasn't a lot good enough to beat Kansas City so what the hell you're gonna do uh, I'm not too sure but uh that's not my part to decide on um let's see what else right DeMar Hamlin still yeah okay. so then they also <laughs> he's like they one also one Mitch, Morris. That's- Mitch Morris has been a center mm-hmm. for the past few years Right. Yeah. Um, let's see. What else? Um, what other? Oh, there, there's been so that, many. But... Um, so. The, um, let's see. What else? Um, likewise, the, the Dolphins gotten significantly weaker. Um, it's Ross, and not so much good news for both the Dolphins, but I don't really care about them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That. That's no. That's fair. Um, I guess another team had a big free agency so far was Chris moves this man. Uh, Chris. He's into Vegas. Uh, Robert Hunt. He's. Uh, going to be interesting on where. Oh, but um, we'll see what happens for Miami, for Miami and uh, Buffalo. Either way, they might have, um, and due to losing a lot of depth. Yeah, um, they are losing a lot of depth. Um. Yeah, I mean, another team with a big free agency was, um, you know, the the Green Bay Packers. Um, they they signed another former Giant, um, Xavier McKinney, uh, four years, sixty eight million, and then um, and Josh Jacobs, um, from the Raiders, um, are also like I guess in free agency, but four years, um, forty eight million. So they got their running back, uh, replaced. Um, Aaron Jones signed with the Vikings. The another um division switch there, but um, Josh Jacobs, Xavier McKinney for Green Bay. Um, I think that's a pretty good, solid free agency. I think they address some positions that um, of need, you know, building on a playoff run that you know went to the NFC, you know, divisional. So I mean, yeah, I'd say that'll be solid for for the Packers. Um, and I guess you know, just to I guess just to keep this going. You know the um the the Bengals they extended um Cincinnati um they they extended um T Higgins or they they signed him on um, one year twenty one point eight million. Um, well, well that's deal, franchise the, tagging. That's not really an extension. Tagging. Yeah, yeah. I just remember that was the the but, franchise tag for. Um, but for surprising Higgins, news but, is yeah. I I I was a bit surprised at this. They cut Joe, well they traded Joe Mixon to the Texans. I I wasn't expecting that. They did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Me neither. I thought that that one, that one kind of seemed to come out of left field a little bit. Um, yeah, make the Texans. Um, it just seems like the running backs. I mean, like everyone just switched teams. I mean, if we were to deal with Mixon going to the Texans, then Singletary going to the Giants, Saquon going to the Eagles. Um, you see where I'm going with this? Uh, Josh, the Eagles. Um, yeah, Josh Jacobs going to um, the Packers. Um, and then right. Aaron, Aaron Jones going, to, uh, going Bears, to the Vikings. Um, right. And of course, Tony Pollard perhaps going the biggest, to, um, Titans. And of course, the biggest running back move we haven't talked about yet: Derrick Henry going to the Ravens. 
Oh man, I, I love that. Like he's like the perfect running back for that team too. Like you, you know, like they, they already have so much on talent on the offense. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't, I don't right. know about that one. But I mean, they could, the, they, they could really. I'm, I don't know about that yeah, one because so. the Ravens, like if you the Ravens offense, they're really shifty and speedy, and every, I mean, right. of course, don't get me wrong. They want Derrick Henry is very back fast back for, for the big man. Well, Der yeah. Derrick Henry is very fast for, for how big he is, but Derrick Henry is not oh, really yeah. like yeah. shifty. He's not agile. He's big. Yeah. He's physical. He it will mow you down that. like a lawnmower. That's but that's true. But maybe they also, need some not of that because they have all these shifty guys. Yeah, but let's not forget also Derrick Henry's like 30, 31. Who knows how many who knows how that's many true. years he's got left? Um that's another thing to factor in. Uh, how much of a factor it'll be? I don't yeah. know. But the Ravens off the Ravens, they're certainly not gonna use Derrick Henry like he was used four or five years ago. Where he was just plowed mm, no, downhill constantly, day. just torturing your defensive line. Right. Yeah. I wonder if Earl Thomas still has nightmares yeah. from Derrick oh. Henry. Uh, from four years ago. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, Derrick Henry on the Ravens. Um, it's a big move. I mean, I, I like oh, that for, for oh, but the speaking, um, but, um, speaking of the really Ravens, Pat speaking back. of the Ravens, Patrick Queen signed with the Steelers. Uh, mm. form, former linebacker. Feels like an Ravens. offseason. Yeah. Right. Exactly. It's like a lot of division yeah. rival switching going on with Queen and you know Saquon and um. Uh, Aaron Jones, but um, yeah, but that's you know that's kind of the name of the the game, you know. But um, I think that's a good move for for the Steelers. That's a great solid player from from their defense. Um, you know, I think that could really help. And, uh, you know, the course. Steelers are there. You got TJ Watt and Patrick Queen with that really good line but, there. But, and of course, let's let's not forget the Steelers signed by uh, good old Chef Russell Wilson. We'll see how that. I mean, yes, it, it's really a low risk, high reward oh. contract for the Steelers because oh know, yeah, Kenny Pickett the, the is Broncos garbage. are basically paying Russell. their entire contract. Yeah, except for one point two million. So I mean, yeah if, yeah, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If it does, you know, it's great. I mean, yeah. it I really mean, is already... low risk, high reward. Yeah, so it's. I mean, it should be interesting. I mean, costs. maybe now George Pickens might actually get the ball thrown towards him. <laughs> Maybe no George yeah, Pickens yeah, might actually get yeah. the ball. I don't know. Right. Right. Yeah. And, uh, Deontay well, Johnson. Um, Russell Wilson certainly had a is Deontay Johnson under contract? Um, I, I think so. Yeah. Um, Deontay Johnson. Right. Pretty sure he is. He's he's still on. He's still on the team. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. I mean Russell Wilson. Um, had a better better year in Denver last year. Let's see if he can keep that going in Pittsburgh. A better situation, better team. Um, you know, maybe it takes them to the next well, level. Let's not forget um, this is Pittsburgh. Yes. Let, let's not forget Pittsburgh's well, offense yeah. sucks. Yeah. It sucked. It sucked. I know. Uh, they could really it sucked royally with Matt Canada, and it sucked royally without Matt Canada uh -huh. as well. I don't know. Right. I I don't know. I don't. The Steelers' offense is quite pathetic to put it lightly yeah yeah well like you said hopefully russell wilson can get you know deontay johnson um george pickens i mean receiver like that you know get get them the ball um yeah i mean who, who's a who's a steelers running back i feel like it's like someone good for some reason i i, I don't blanking on that but um naji harris yeah i mean pretty it's naji right yes you know but um yeah it's naji um, yeah, I guess he's kind of like a pass catching back somewhat, but I mean, yeah, I mean, we can get that run, um, well, not only the run game, but the pass game involved with Russell Wilson, knowing the Steelers is probably, they're probably going to have the same record as last year, but like, um, yeah, but I mean, it looks good though. I mean, maybe they take a step up, who knows? Um, plus Patrick Queen on, on the defensive, on the defensive end as well. So, I mean. Yeah, and I I think like some other like underrated moves that have been made. Uh, I mean, I think Gabriel Davis going to uh, going to Jacksonville. That that certainly you know it, it adds another yeah, adds another kind of like dynamic weapon bit, for yeah. Trevor Lawrence to use. Yeah, it, and at the same time, Josh Allen is losing is losing some of his weapons. So um, thank you, Jacksonville. 
Uh, and, you know, now this puts more pressure on Stefan Diggs. Now, we still don't know whether he's right. going to want out or whether he's going to stay committed, especially with Buffalo releasing basically like a quarter of their team or letting them walk away in free agency. Uh, you yeah, know, now yeah. you got to think about how, how Josh Allen feels about all this because Josh Allen has a lot of leverage over the Bills management. So if he's not happy, then you got bigger problems. And so like, we'll, see, we'll see what happens there. But I think T-Law, he should um, – uh, Trevor Lawrence, he should – you know, assuming Calvin Ridley's uh, be, is able to be signed back, um, they should have a lot more options right there. So let's see. Um, there's that'd be Ridley, and there's Davis, and of course there's Etn as as their uh, as their back. You know, Jacksonville should, you know, in theory, um, unless if they decide to imitate the last six weeks of last season, they should be a playoff team. Yeah, I mean, should be, um, should be. You know, whether that actually happens or not, that that, you know, it's a, it's gonna be a question. But um, yeah, I mean, I I would be are as well. I mean, yeah, they should have made the playoffs last last season, but you know, they decided to you know go on vacation a little bit earlier than expected. So I'm not. Yeah. I'm not really the sure. fall off for, for for Jacksonville for sure, but um, yeah. Anyway, um, I will say I speaking of the AFC South. Speaking of the AFC South, I am a bit surprised the lack of moves that that Houston made. I I mean, really, pretty much the significant thing they did was trade for Joe Mix. Never really mm-hmm. done much of that. Yeah, just some some extensions in there, but so, no, nothing um, much. I mean, I think Don Schultz um, signing him three years, thirty six million. I think that was big. He was a big part of their offense. Um, I like that. I like when they got him from Dallas. I thought he was productive there, but even probably even more so in Houston. Um, you know, um, especially with Ferguson on the Cowboys. And um, speaking of the Cowboys, they haven't really done like much of anything. Like I think all they did is they they re-signed their long snapper. So. So much for you know going all in, but it's just just like they're like one of the few teams. I, I assume that, you're not complaining. Really done. No, I'm happy. I mean, yeah. As it is, we already have to deal with the the Eagles. Um, you know, with Saquon and all that, and but uh, you know, I'm all three of the other NFC East teams are busy working, and and they're not. So I mean, I don't know if they're content with you know this you know their first round exit or or what. But um, I thought they you know they're gonna make some moves. They, what they do need is a running back though, because. Pretty much all the top have changed teams, um, you know, um, just, uh, I mean, yeah, they're pretty much they've all, like, teams, but I mean, Dallas is hey, kind of left, I mean, left out of the, the pile right now said, without Tony Pollard. They need a back. You go ahead. Saying, um, uh, you know, maybe if we don't bring back Zeke, uh, maybe he goes back to, maybe he goes back to uh, good old Dallas. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like yeah. I mean, that wouldn't be the worst idea for them. A little bit of homecoming, but um, yeah. No, they definitely need one because it seems like everyone's just all the backs have just changed teams, and you know, I guess just to do like a little fun exercise. Like, I, I bet I could start with one back and then just you know follow that that pipeline, and I'll see if I can get through all of them. So I guess starting with this might be a little tougher because there's probably some some holes in here, but um. Saquon Barkley going from the Giants to the Eagles, DeAndre Swift from the Eagles to the Bears. Um, and yeah, there's 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 some holes. I can't completely fill that circle, but um, yeah, I mean, a lot of oh, big moves. So like Josh Jacobs going from the Raiders to the Packers, Barkley Giants, Eagles, Pollard Dallas to Tennessee, Swift from the Eagles to the Bears, Terry from Houston to the Giants, Henry from Titans to the Ravens. Antonio Gibson, I don't think we got to this one yet, Washington to New England, and then Eckler from the Chargers to Washington, so a little bit of a swap, um, some changing of the backs there. Zach Moss, um, Indianapolis to Cincinnati, of course, Aaron Jones, Green Bay to Minnesota, and Gus Edwards, Baltimore to the Charles Henry comes in, mm-hmm. and Gus Edwards leaves. Um, I think they got someone. The Ravens have another running back, right? That must be good. Team Lamar. Mitchell. Um, yeah, you Keaton, Keaton Mitchell. Mitchell. Yeah, uh huh. He was he was so big for them too in that stretch run. Um, Keaton Mitchell. 
So, um, yeah, so between well, him he, and Henry, he got, he um, got hurt I guess I the other big back. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. Didn't someone, like, take his place that was, like, also pretty good? Like, I don't know, I'm just going to check the depth chart. Yeah, um... I, I can't remember. Oh, well, J.K. Dobbins was anchored head. for a lot of last season. Oh, I'm thinking no, of I, Justice I, Hill. He was pretty good, too. Yeah, oh, yeah, just, yeah. And then, I of mean, course, J.K. Dobbins coming J. K. off of IR, so, you know. No, I think I think it's time, honestly. Like, you know, it's a harsh reality of sports business, but I'm, I'm kind of surprised J.K. Dobbins hasn't been cut yet. I mean, like... Let's be real. You gotta look at it. This yeah. Point. Like in the two, of the, in the two of the four seasons he's been on the Ravens, he's had season-ending injuries and hasn't even played a snap. So like, um, I, I mean, I think maybe like you know the Ravens are holding out a little bit of hope for him, but I don't know. I, I think it. I think like J.K. should should be cut because I'm not saying that because I'm hating or anything. It's because like you know, in the four years that he's been on the Ravens are three years or whatever it is he, he's basically played one season and even that one season it's been marked with injuries like jk dobbins has unfortunately been bitten by the injury bug several times over he's he's been cursed and you know it's unfortunate but it's the reality right right yeah no um yeah i agree with that and then um yeah um see i guess we talked about aaron jones going to the vikings they also picked up sam darnold andrew van ginkle so they made some some um jonathan greener blake cashman all signing with them um a lot of de defensive reinforcements there for another team in purple yeah, i guess how's justin I jefferson was... thinking about how's just how's exactly. justin jefferson and jordan addison thinking because they're they went from quarterback to sam damn darnold darnold the same Darnold who saw right. a ghost against New England. The same Darnold who, yeah. who completely like screwed up against Carolina. The same Darnold who held Brock Purdy's clipboard. But actually, no, that might have been a good thing. So, how do you think Addison and and uh, Jefferson feel going from arguably a top ten quarterback in the league, arguably, to you know perhaps a top ten bust QB of all time? I don't know. Probably, I can't probably not too great. Too I mean, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, I agree with that. Um, I remember just Justin Jefferson, like he got frustrated with Kirk Cousins at one point, didn't he, during his rookie year or something? But and this is going to be like a lot, lot worse. Um, you know, um, he's either the very rookie, talented wide receiver. Is either the rookie or the sophomore year? One of those two. Yeah, I think it was. Well, I think yeah, it might Justin have even Jefferson been his rookie. Jefferson is the best wide receiver in the league. Like exactly, exactly. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, Jay Jets see. is arguably the yeah. best wide receiver in the league, and Jordan Addison that I provides think, a very deadly right. one-two punch of wide out. Very, very deadly. Um, yeah. Um, see, I guess, you know, the other New York team, the Jets, they've done too much, uh, but they signed on David Ravon Kinlaw from the Niners. It's actually wait, wait, speak, pretty speak big. Speak of the uh, – Speaking of the Vikings, like we didn't uh, talk about this before, they released Alexander Madison, and he was he was essentially their primary back mm -hmm. after after Cook was released last season. Now right, the I Vikings don't really yeah. have a running back. Yeah. Uh, interesting. And also speaking of the 49ers, so also they're speaking of the 49ers. The, wait, Eric well they got Aaron Johnson. Jones, but I mean like Yeah, that is true. But um yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. if you yeah. saw if you saw Aaron Jones play last season. Like you know, he like there were times when AJ Dillon got a lot more of the carries. Uh, there were times where uh, Jones That's wasn't true. used that much yeah. in the passing game or in the running game. So right, I don't know what to make of that move. And also going back to your point about the 49ers, since we we're talking about defensive tackles, uh, Eric mm -hmm. Arms said he got cut by the Niners because he refused to take a pay cut. Um, oh wow! Interesting. Uh, yeah. That's, that's going to be huge wherever he signs. Yeah. Leonard Floyd also signing with them, um, George Odom. But um, yeah, um, so you see Hawks extended Leonard Williams, no fan. Um, Baker Mayfield signed a huge extension with the, the Buccaneers. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, Javon Kinlaw signing with the Jets. Um, it's kind of the only thing coming out of the other side of New York right now. But um, you know, the Jets also giving a big player away in free agency to the Eagles and Bryce Huff um, for a big contract in Philly. 
three years, 51 and a half million. Um, yeah, so that's another reinforcement on that on the defensive side of the ball. So I guess they got an offensive star player and a pretty good defensive player as well. Um, wasn't too familiar with yes. Bryce Huff's game, but he's you know pretty solid player. Um, so it was both like so it's Eagles picking up a giant and a jet, which is interesting actually too. And I'll tell you what, the, the safeties market is quite littered right now. Uh, there's Justin Simmons who got released. Then there's, um, uh, what's his name? Let's see. Then there's Jordan Poyer. Like, you know, the safeties yeah. market, it, it, you know, there's a lot of big commodities safeties market's there. Good, yeah. But no one's really knocking, you know, no one's really been knocking on the door just yet. Yeah, it seems like in terms of safety, it's like Xavier McKinney might be the only big name sign. Yeah, I'm sure teams will get around to that. Because Jordan Poyer Um, was perhaps the most important player on the Bills' defense, especially with uh, Tredavious White being out, being injured like all the damn time. So like Jordan Poyer's, he was the voice for the uh, for the for the back front on the um for the bills of course of course though i wouldn't argue that he's the most important player on the bills defense i'd argue that was matt milano um but mm-hmm. you know now um now the bills defense has been drastically altered and to an extent their offense too because gabe davis even though even though he had his inconsistent moments when he was throwing the ball in situations where it mattered allen trusted him there's a reason why it's because Gabe Davis is dependable, but now he's going to Jacksonville. So the Bills will have some holes to fill a wide receiver. They got some holes to fill in their secondary. Yeah. And they even have a hole to fill in maybe at their linebacker. Because if you saw their linebacking mm-hmm. core against the divisional in the divisional round, their linebacking core is pretty unrecognizable from what was supposed to be their starting linebackers. So you know, right, there might right. be something to beef up. Could have been, yeah. so the, the Bills, yeah, like the I remember Dolphins, their they have a lot like of problems on defense. Yeah. yeah, the Bills, like the Dolphins, yeah. that, are going that into this free agency yeah. very, th- yeah, very thin on their defensive core, especially within their linebacking. Right. And to an extent, yeah. the uh, cornerbacks. Oh, yeah, that's right. The Dolphins released a Xavier Howard. Yeah, so, yeah, both, both, mm, both, teams, both teams shredded their best corner. And both teams shed at their best corner, so we'll see what happens. But regardless, yep. if this means if this means that Buffalo is going to suck a bit more on defense than they normally <laughs> do, same with Miami. I am all all for it. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm sure you are. And yeah. yeah, I wanted to get to the Patriots because um, I don't think we talked about any of their their moves yet. But um, you know, from what I'm seeing, you know, looks. Like, like extensions there for Derek Hen- um Derek Henry, Hunter Henry. Um I think they looks like they franchise yeah, tag um, Kyle Dunger. <laughs> and then um yeah. Mike Owen Owen Wu three years fifty seven. Mike Mike Owenu, yeah, Mike Owenu, big big mover there. Bringing back Hendrick Bourne, that was a signing I really liked. Um that, mm, that, was, that, was, that was a good really signing. He was on my fancy team last year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean like you and know Henry, Kendrick that's Bourne, a good, that's he, a good one. Dugger. And a run. We we uh, released uh, Devonte Parker. Well, then again, it's not like he did much, anyways. So uh, I, I can't really I can't really say I'm too upset about that. Um, but yeah, and then yeah, we bring in Antonio Gibson. I think Antonio Gibson will be a will be a really good compliment to Ramondre Stevenson um, because mm-hmm. Stevenson is more the uh, downhill physical back. And Antonio Gibson is more of a right. pass catching back, and of course, of course, uh, we played we played Washington last season. Um, we like yeah. you know we lost the game pretty much because Antonio Gibson kept kept getting fed the ball. So um, it should mm. you know it's nice it's nice that he's up it's it's nice that he's on our team now. And you know I I mean does yeah. he necessarily replace James White from a few years ago? I don't know, but. Antonio Gibson, he he probably he had a little bit more muscle than James White, but James White, of course, very reliable in the pass catching game. So, we'll, yeah, we'll see what I remember that. We'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then um, Austin Eckler coming in to Washington to fill that role. Um, 
I went to top fantasy back, but um, you know, it's like he kind of almost got a notice because the Chargers are the Chargers, and I feel like that might happen again in Washington a little bit. But he'll probably give them good numbers, and you know that you know basically a good option to replace Gibson in the backfield there for sure. Um, probably even better. I think you know he's one of the top backs yeah, in the league. The, I think that's question, that's a good signing on a cheap deal you know, too. The, qu- you know. the question that all these teams need to answer though, like all these running back swaps, the question these teams need to answer. Does swapping out X for Y actually solve anything? If the answer is yes, then mm-hmm. then apparently that's a good sign. But like, does bringing right. in Josh Jacobs that's in exchange? Right. Yeah, does bringing in Josh Jacobs for Aaron Jones solve anything? For, like, did that get rid of a problem or add to a solution for for the Packers? Because Aaron Aaron Jones is pretty reliable in both the running game and the passing game as a backfield. I mean, I guess the only notable thing is that Aaron Jones fumbled a little bit, but and Josh Jacobs doesn't necessarily right, attempt right. to do that. So maybe that's one thing you could say. But Josh Jacobs is more of a running back than he is as a pass catcher. So that's a sacrifice you're making right there. And as for the Bengals, Joe Mixon for Zach Moss. I and mean, Zach Moss is way more reliable in the passing game, but you can't really trust him in the running game, whereas Joe Mixon was kind of the opposite. You could trust him in the – in the running game, but not too much in the passing game. So, you know, it seems like they're trading X for Y. They're adding a solution, but they're also adding a problem. Yeah. So, you know, it depends on how all it's these like teams every, are trying to make pretty much it what rest. happened. Yeah. Exactly. It seems like that's pretty much what happened with most of these teams who traded one running back for another. Um, I think a lot of them try to get get cheaper. Like I know, obviously, like the Giants did that. Um, and then you know the Eagles pick, picked up the tab, but I mean I you know like I said earlier I think they could have they, they they could afford to so they did they have a better team to surround them with and Giants weren't really in that kind of position and they got someone cheaper and then I think to a different extent DeAndre Swift also kind of you know going to the Bears I think they you know Bears were willing to give him more money than you know because the Eagles wanted Saquon so then that kind of left them with you know um to give swift away to or the bears were willing to pay so yeah that kind of that kind of trend happened all throughout the the market and then josh jacobs obviously going to green bay aaron jones signing for cheap with the vikings See, some teams just wanted like you know a short-term fix you know other teams wanted kind of more of a long-term you know big big name so it, it kind of depends all about the team's like situation and you know what they're looking for you you got some big spenders here for the big names and then you got those teams who gave away running backs getting you know talent for cheaper trying to get the bu- the best bang for their buck um so yeah so we saw you know a whole mixture of, of those kind of things going on um that's why kind of when you read through this it looks like one team just swapped a running back for another and you can almost go through the whole list and close the circle because that's that seems that seems to be what happened either you know a team either teams you know were were able to afford the biggest names and pay for them, and then the um you know the teams that sent them away wanted talent on the cheaper for a similar production. They got it, so I mean yeah, that's what the, the running back market looks like. Um, I think all the top names are kind of off the board, but I mean there's still some players out there. I mean who you I mean, know I guess right, right now Cal- change team right now Calvin and, Ridley yeah right now Calvin Ridley is is the biggest name in the in the free agency market right now. Yeah, that that's a huge one um you know kind of resurgent season there with the the jaguars after the whole you know suspension thing but i mean yeah um yeah that's a that's a big name um yeah i mean i got i guess the ne- now we're kind of down to like the next tier where it's like quarter l patterson um we talked about madison vikings and then you mentioned zeke you know that could be an interesting reunion there at the cowboys Clyde edwards hilaire seems like he might be the third back Un, or maybe like well you know with Pacheco and um even McKinnon you know like it seems like you know he might be looking for a new team potentially and then um you know Dante four times on um, Boston Scott um, I heard the Giants had interest in him that would be like the funniest thing for the Giants to get after um the Eagles picked up well, thing, Barkley but the thing is about that. the thing is the the thing is Giants fans cared a lot more about Saquon Barkley than Eagles fans cared about Boston Scott so. I don't yeah, because really Boston Scott was their, be their like third back. Revenge. I mean, Saquon Barkley was the two pick and superstar. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't I mean, know it's not really revenge. I just, I, I just think it'd be funny. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, he's yeah, well, it's kind of funny. Like, I feel like the fans. 
Yeah, I, it, it's weird. I feel like fans kind of switch sides because, like, the second Saquon left for Philadelphia, Eagles fans are like, oh, yeah, he's actually pretty good when they've been, like, you know, being like, oh, he's overrated. And now Giants fans are like, oh, actually, he wasn't that good. You know, he didn't even reach a 1,000 yards, like, three of the seasons, and he was often injured. But, like, because he was on my team, I would never admit that or I never of at least, you, you know, use an argument against him. But now I'm like, now I'm willing to look at it and be like, no, that's an overpay. Like, he wasn't even healthy half the time, you know, um, you know what I mean? And he, even when he was healthy, he, you know, sometimes the, because of the, the line, all of that, like he, he struggled, but now I'm willing to obviously look at the other side. And it's kind of funny to do that. At the same time, the problem for the Giants though, is without Saquon Barkley, the way their, their team is like, they better hope Singletary is going to be as good because if not, um, with all the problems with the line and the quarterback and, you know, the receivers not being utilized because, um, I feel like they have decent talent there, but needs to, needs to be utilized. But I'm, in any case, um, you know, because of all those other problems, without Saquon Barkley, if the Giants can't patch that up, um, it's a lot worse um, next year. Because as bad as, as things were last year, they they could kind of fall back on him when he was healthy. Without without that, um, like you know, Giants are going to be in a whole mess if they can't figure out the rest of it. So that's why this free agency period is key um, on the offensive side, especially this draft is key to, to kind of get those investments in on the O line. I mean, I know they signed them. Um, you know, um, John Runyon, Brian Burns, that was a big move. Drew Locke, it, it's, they're working on it. But it, if they don't get these these problems ad- addressed, um, the Saquon Barkley issue is not going to be that he went to the Eagles. It's going to be that it basically leaves the offense yeah. without their one consistent piece. And that's going to be if a much bigger one, problem than him. If, sil- if there is one silver lining for the New Jersey Giants, it's this. Um, <laughs> when Brian Burns was initially offered up as a trade package, a season ago, the Los Angeles Ra- or a season or two seasons ago, I forget which one. The Los Angeles Rams were offering two first round picks for Brian Burns. Two first round, yeah. You know I, rem- I remember. Yeah, I just yeah. saw saw that somewhere actually. Yeah. Yeah, and you you know what it costs you now? It costs you a second and a fifth. That's chump change compared to two first round. What picks. what a steal! Uh, but yeah. I, yeah, I mean, but is he, we're thinking I mean, when it's a steal. In, that it's, a, one, but... it's a steal in terms of draft capital. It's a steal in terms of draft capital. Right. But is it a steal in terms of paying thirty million dollars a year? That remains eh. to be seen. I mean, Brian oh, Burns. No. Brian Burns yeah, is a, a he's a, a pretty contract. darn good player. No, he's a pretty darn good player. He know, he knows how to like right. he knows how to like get through the offensive line. He knows how to surge. He knows how to do spin moves and mm-hmm. all that. Gets mm-hmm. the quarterback. But is that worth right. thirty million dollars a year? I don't think so. Is Chris Jones worth it? Is Chris Jones worth a truckload of money? Yes, he is. He got the he got yeah, his five year deal. He got ninety five million guaranteed. I think he's the highest paid highest paid defensive tackle. Yeah. Yeah. Chris I Jones think is so, yeah. worth a truckload of money because of, because of what he's done with the Chiefs. He, like, right, it's right. unfortunate, but unfortunately, he has to be resigned. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad they took care of that because otherwise that would have been another ongoing thing for them. But yeah, yeah. Um, Chiefs, I don't even think we talked about them, but they, they kind of made that move early. And then, obviously, well, we talked about their other moves, but um, Drew Tranquil, like Jerry Sneed getting the franchise tag, although he, I think that means he could be traded. And then, obviously, they you know they released MBS. But um, yeah, now Chris Jones is definitely you know the highlight of, of that, solidifying that defense um, for years to come, I guess. Yeah, I, I don't I don't really know how old he is right now, but um, if he's getting a five year deal, I trust I trust he's going to be um, he's going to be the face of the of the defensive line and perhaps the Chiefs' defense for the next couple of years. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I think so too. I mean, yeah, it, it's good. Um, you know, I don't know about Snead. I mean, it would be good if they could keep him after what he's done for them, especially his past season. But, I mean, the corners and safeties, you know, excellent play there from Kansas City. I mean, that defense, well, I already mentioned all of that, but, I mean, defense really stepped up and, and kind of became the identity of that team. And Chris Jones is the identity of that defense. So, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think that pretty much, you know, I think that pretty much covers every, you know, big move made by pretty much every team. I think we pretty much got through everything. Um, do, you, do you have any final thoughts before we sign off, I guess? Um, wait, who's the corner uh, Detroit traded for? 
I, I, I forgot who, um, I forgot who uh, what was the corner the Lions traded for. Oh, um, Amik Robertson. Was that was that what uh, Detroit? Because I remember seeing like Detroit gave up like a third round pick uh, for one of the corners. Uh, yeah, well, I'm looking at a list of the uh, of, uh, yeah of every uh, every move or every every move by team, and I'm seeing under the Lions. Um, obviously they got you know Graham Glasgow, um, who's a guard, but then also Meek Robertson from um, from the Raiders, um, two years, just over nine million nine twenty no, nine point two five. So that's I think that's the guy you're, okay. you're looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. I get, I mean, I didn't really, I didn't really study the Raiders' defense all that much, so I don't know like how meaningful uh, that signing is. But I mean, that Me trade is, but that remains to be seen. But like, I as I was saying, like Detroit going into the season, they really need to address their secondary, and it seems like they're making a move right there. I mean, I would love to see Detroit sign like Jordan Poyer or Justin Simmons. I would love to see that. Or maybe even tr- yeah, that would be that would be a big move. Yeah, true. Yeah. Mm. yeah, they have um CJ um CJ GJ right um uh, CJ Johnson still right from from Philly. So I mean, and then you know getting um, oh yeah yeah, and then getting Robertson I guess for you know another um their other position or you know um yeah. So I mean, I, I feel like they got their covers cornered, but um. Their their corners covered. Did I say covers corner? No boy. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, but they got their their corners covered. I guess. Um, should be an interesting season in Detroit. Um, because you know, coming off the NFC Championship game, one. Um, you know, I, I think they're gonna try to retool for that. Try to keep their the roster intact. But um, yeah. I mean, that's pretty much. Um, you know, I mean, that's you know, um, pretty much big moves. I mean, you know, then the Colts extending them, you know, that was an, um, Michael Pittman. I thought that was a big one too, but, um, but pretty much, you know, covers all the major moves so far. It's only been, it's only been about two days of free agency. Most of the work kind of happens pretty early on. And then, you know, things will kind of quiet down a little bit. And, you know, as we get into draft season and, you know, moves will continue to pop up here and there, but, um, yeah, I'm definitely glad we got to talk about that because it was definitely, you know, um really one very big day and even today it moves made so yeah i mean next next week um i think we're gonna uh, you know do have a more normal episode we talk about a mixture of different sports and um you know march madness is going to be the brackets are going to be coming out so i might be bringing on someone to talk march madness about the brackets um might throw in a little just vibing episode um bringing in someone from the radio station to talk about March Madness, preview the NBA playoffs, and talk about you know our time at the radio station or some other fun top. You guys know how that series is um, definitely a fan favorite of the channel. Um, so I'll try to get that arranged. Um, if not, we'll have a normal episode um, probably next Monday or Tuesday, and coming out probably no later than a day after. But um, you know, until then, this has been another episode of Sports Vibe. Amarna Sarkar sending off here for Hitesh Ramakrishnan. Uh, enjoy your spring break and. As always, we will see you next week.